Hello, it's Scott, and if you're a regular player of Kerbal Space Program, I don't doubt that you have occasionally gotten yourself into this situation. As you see, my rocket has uh, underestimated how much fuel was required for its landing on Minmus and subsequent manoeuvring, and the return trajectory is uh, just shy of the atmosphere, which will slow it down. The ship has no reaction control system, no more fuel tanks. Even though the pilot seems to think there's fuel on board, examination of the fuel tanks reveals there's nothing in reserve. One possibility is a stage decoupler, which will separate the spacecraft with a small velocity. By pointing our spacecraft along the retrograde vector and waiting until Apple Key, we maximize the effectiveness of this small velocity change. But that is not enough, bringing us down to just above 100 kilometers. At this point, mission control appears to have exhausted all eventualities and are preparing a rescue mission. The pilot tries to make light of his impending long wait by jokingly saying, would it help if I got out and pushed? At which point, Mission Control pauses for a moment and replies, Actually, it would help if you got out and pushed. You see, it turns out that every Kerbal Space Program command pod has enough fuel on board to essentially refill the pilot's EVA packs indefinitely. So the pilot can get out, maneuver around to the back of the spaceship, and, uh, fly into it very slowly to uh, give it a push. Now, of course, we're doing this at Apple Key to uh, maximize the effect of the small velocity change this is inducing, and uh, it takes a few attempts. Every time we sit on the back of it and start pushing it, it tends to pick up a bit of rotation. Now, you can try and adjust the, the rotation by using the, the pack to try and keep yourself in the middle, but eventually you're going to find it rotating too much. And at that point, you want to get back in and fly the ship again, line it up again, basically stop all the rotation, get out and try again. And um, this can take a few attempts. In this case, I took three tries to get myself into a deorbit trajectory. I tried this early on from a 100 kilometer altitude. And of course, I would change the the, the orbital nodes by only a few kilometers at a time, and it would take me about 20 or 30 attempts to actually deorbit this thing. Whereas uh, this case, we've, we've basically gone out to a highly elliptical orbit so that the velocity changes are much more sensitive on the final trajectory. So we drop it down from 100 kilometers down to under 9 kilometers. I, I want to not be skimming the upper atmosphere, especially now that they've modified the time acceleration so that you can't double speed through the atmosphere anymore. Uh, that is kind of frustrating. But I am glad that they have given me 100,000 times time acceleration. That is a much welcomed even though all my interplanetary spacecraft are now unflyable. Now, if I was really OCD and impatient, I could have just left the two stages together and deorbited the whole thing rather than leaving some debris in uh, Earth orbit. But if you're really dedicated, it is now clear that with the infinite fuel provided by the EVA system, you can essentially get infinite Delta V from the, the game and travel anywhere in the entire Kerbal universe. Although landing is, of course, a one-way trip. Another thing I've noticed is that the, the capsules seem to have much lower wind resistance now, so they slow down more slowly in the atmosphere than previously. If you descend through the atmosphere too fast and uh, too steeply, it's entirely possible that you end up hitting the ground before your parachute can open. Or rather, it opens, but it actually gets torn off instead. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.